Uh, I shared with you the results of that survey that you all took. Uh, that's the survey, if you remember, where 72% of you said, even if I had money or even if money wasn't the issue, there's no way I can get into a top graduate program in the field that I That's what you guys said. And I said it's not very surprising to me. That's what my students in previous classes have said. And I think, to me, that also indicates that many of you think, well, there's not a very high chance for me getting a job with one of those huge and really rich and nice uh, national or international corporations uh, where people have those dream jobs. I'm probably not going to get that either. That's sort of what I sensed, even though that's me reading between the lines. Maybe I'm wrong, but I have to say, uh, I find this result a bit troubling. And I find it troubling, and I want to tell you why. Uh, I, I really want to start today perhaps a series of, of conversations. Uh, that won't take that long, but uh, a series of conversations about you and, and, and the future, and your future in, in general. And the first issue that I'd like to discuss is really what does it take to make it big? What does it take to get to those places that 72% of you said, I can't get there? Uh, what distinguishes people who can't get there from the people who can't? And I, you know, I, I have a little bit of experience on that front. So let me use the grad school example again, because let's face it, uh, for most serious careers these days, you're going to have to go to grad school at some point. Uh, and I know for most of you, you just started college and like, wow, this is like ages away. But uh, at some point, you're going to have to do that. Uh, and so let's talk about grad school uh, for a few minutes. University of Michigan, um, or, or Stanford, or MIT, or Georgetown, what does it take? Most people, pretty much maybe, I should say all people, who got to these graduate programs didn't get there just because someone decided to put them there. They got there because they really wanted it, they had a big dream, they were willing to work hard for that dream, and they made it happen. So, if you don't believe in yourself, or if you don't have big dreams, or can't, bring yourself to develop big dreams, then it's definitely not going to happen. So at some point, I want to talk about creating those big dreams. Maybe not today. Let's say we have two students, OK? Uh, and there is one final spot left at the very prestigious graduate program. Two people are competing for it. They both have the same GPA. They both have wonderful letters of recommendation. They wrote excellent essays. One is a graduate of Ball State, and the other is a graduate of NYU or Cornell, one of those schools. Who here thinks that the NYU or Cornell graduate is more likely to get the place in grad school? All right, so about half of you or so. Now let's think about a job. Unbelievable job in Manhattan, first job after college, advertises a starting position. Unbelievable in New York City, everyone wants to go to New York, right? Unbelievable job there, again, two graduates, same credentials, one from Ball State, one from NYU, who thinks that the person from NYU is more likely to get the position. All right. I like it that about half of you uh, raised their hand, because really the answer is not very clear. We don't really know that. And in fact, just my personal and not very statistical impression, asking other uh, people who hire other people um, about who they hire, you don't get a very clear response. It seems like the school you go to doesn't really matter that much, unless you go to one of those for-profit schools, in which case you have a problem, but we're not there. So, um, so what is it, beyond believing in yourself, uh, what is it that you need if the school doesn't actually matter? Yeah, you need uh, decent grades, that's true. But how decent do they have to be? Uh, you don't really need a 4.0 GPA, and there are very few programs that if you don't have 3.8 or above, you just have no chance and don't waste your time applying. There are some programs like that, but not many. If you have 3.5 or above, there are really a lot of opportunities open for you. But even if you're in the 3.4, 3 or 2 range, you still have quite a few options. And, and maybe even in the 3.0 range, you still have quite a few options. And this means that you're actually allowed to screw up from time to time. It's fine. You can still have big dreams. You know, I had C's and D's in college. 
and I got into Princeton for grad school. It is possible. You can do it, but of course, you don't want to sweat too much. Maybe that won't be such a good idea. The third thing is you need a plan, and this is a big, big deal. A lot of people who get into these really cool places have a plan, and the plan doesn't start two weeks or two months before the application deadline for grad school when you're a senior in college. It's never too early to start thinking about it, and the plan has to start a long time before because there are all sorts of elements that you need to have in your application to make you appealing to those skills that takes a long time to build, like connections with your professors, like writing samples, all sorts of things. It's never too early to start. Now, I know some of you are probably sitting here like, well, I just finished high school, and I don't really know what I want to do. Well, maybe the solution is go home and start doing some research. You probably, even if you don't know exactly what you want to do, you at least have a sense of the general area or five or ten different things that interest you. Well, you go to the top schools in each of those areas and try to see what do these places actually want. Because if they want you to take certain classes, well, maybe you have to make a plan for college and how to do this, right? And that brings me to my next point. Beyond planning, which is really, really important, uh, if you sit and do this research, you'll soon learn something very interesting. It doesn't actually matter what you study. It's true, there are some programs, like medical schools is, is most uh, apparent example, where you really have to study, to take certain classes and, and major in, in, in certain, take certain majors uh, to actually be allowed into medical school. But most graduate programs don't care much about what you study. They care about other things. They care about um, how you did in school. They care about what skills you acquired. They care about whether you can speak, write, or read a foreign language, whether you've been abroad. They care about those things. Uh, they care about if you had real life experience, but not so much what you actually study. Uh, if you want a more concrete example, yes. You don't actually have to be a business major to go get an MBA later. In fact, most of the people who get into MBA programs are not business majors. Only about 11 or 12 percent of them are. Look this up. These are statistics. They're online. Uh, you don't have to have a political science degree to go and get some uh, public policy or international relations graduate degree. You don't. So pretty, there are other things that matter. Another thing, uh, just a side comment, you really should not be worried about money. I talk to a lot of students, and many of them tell me, well, it's very nice, everything that you're saying, but I'm never going to be able to afford this fancy grad school, so why would I even worry about it? Uh, yeah, I went to Princeton for five years, it didn't cost me anything, and they paid me to go there. Uh, there are many opportunities like that, you just need to look for them, find them, make a plan a long time in advance, and realize what you need to do to actually get there and make it happen. Start worrying about money after you get admitted to your dream program, not the day before. And the uh, last thing I say is this, there are a lot of things you can do to build a better uh, profile for yourself that I didn't mention now, like uh, having a very attractive online public profile where when people Google you, because everyone Googles everyone these days, uh, that's one of the things you can do. And it takes time to do that too, so it's never too early to start. Um, and there are all sorts of other things. And number one, and, and I'll be talking about more of these things as, as we move on in the semester, but number one on my list, and that's where I want to start next time, is the issue of networking and when you're in college. It's really mostly networking with uh, your teachers, with your professors. Now, if I may cautiously judge by the uh, multitude of emails that I've received from students in this class so far, you guys need a little bit of help in how to approach your teachers. And I say this uh, very comfortably because I'm a, a very informal guy. And when students write to me and say, yo, prof, how are you? Or LOL, or all of these things, I'm kind of OK with it. But then I think some other people might not be. So um, you know, how to do this is an art in and of itself. It's something that uh, probably we should devote a separate session to discuss. And so that's what I plan to do next time. Until then, if anyone uh, wants to talk about his or her personal uh, career goals, I mean, please feel free to, uh, to contact me, and I'll be happy to sit and talk to you. All right. Thank you very much. I'll see you next week.